Welcome back to the Future of Real Estate. I'm Brett Ellis of the Ellis team at REMAX Realty Group. If you want to contact us on the phone, it's 239-489-4042. Don't forget our website, which is topagent.com. To our radio show listeners, this is going to be the last day we're on the radio, last day of the year. And uh, what we're doing for this very reason, we're switching all of, we've got the new technology now and we're switching the show, the Future of Real Estate, over to video now. So uh, what's happening is when we share these graphs, when we share experts like we have today, you're going to be able to see everything we've talked about. That last segment, Jack, was fascinating. I just love that gun and how you come up with these uh, scientific results. And I want to get back into, because you started talking about off-gassing and sure. you kind of had my head spinning and whatnot. Yeah. I want to stay on this Chinese drywall topic. Uh, what else do we need to know about Chinese drywall and how you test for this stuff? Okay, well, the the test, uh, you, you can look on the website, which is the, the Department of Health, the Florida Department of Health, and they tell you how to visually check for uh, Chinese drywall. Uh, the first is a smell test, of course, it's a sulfur smell. And it's the hydrogen sulfide off-gassing from the tainted drywall, which is above the normal levels. Uh, then you look at your HIVAC coils, and they, these are the coils of your air conditioner, and they turn black. And then you can look at the uh, ground wire in any of your electrical plugs, and you see if that's turned a black or a silvery gray. Then those are the, the three indications. But, of course, it's subjective, uh, depending on uh, who's looking at it. Uh, some high vac coils may be going bad for other reasons, and there could be some blackening because you may be on well water, which is the same hydrogen sulfide gas. So what I created is a scientific way to be able to test the drywall. And the hydrogen sulfide gas isn't really the culprit. That's a byproduct, isn't That's it? That's a byproduct, okay. yes. Uh, well, when you say it isn't the culprit, it is the sulfur in the hydrogen sulfide that's causing the corrosion, yes. Okay. Uh, but the identification of the drywall you know, needs to be something more on a scientific basis than it does just a smell, taste, visual test. Do we know what causes the health concerns, the bloody noses, that sort of thing? Is that also the hydrogen sulfide, or could it be something else? It is the hydrogen sulfide gas, okay. uh, but I'm, I'm quick to say that the Florida Surgeon General has made a comment uh, at the latest technical symposium held in Tampa that there is no imminent uh, health danger. Uh, however, uh, if you already have a problem, which uh, asthma or uh, some you know other indications like maybe uh, you know age or something in, in that level, of course, you know, or, or you have a uh, allergy to sulfur then certainly this is not going to be beneficial to you. It's more of an aggravator than it is a, a health Yes, uh, That's kind of what we're hearing. Yeah, hydrogen sulfide gas has been tested any number of times, and scientifically, you can smell hydrogen sulfide gas at 4.7 parts per billion. And the highest levels ever tested in these houses is around 150 parts per billion. But you don't start getting the problems of, of skin and eye irritation until parts per million. It's actually 10 parts per million. And hydrogen sulfide gas can cause death at 800 parts per million. Wow. Have you, so any homes no. register that kind of level? Oh, no, no, no. As I said, the, the homes are down in parts per billion. Okay. You know, and I think the highest I've ever seen registered is around 100 to 150 parts per billion. Well, take us through some stuff people might not ordinarily know. Okay, let me show you a, a graph here if you want to look at uh, this graph, which, uh, which uh, on the left-hand side, you've already seen it before on the lower left-hand corner, which is, is, uh, is parts per million, uh, or, and which shows the good uh, drywall on the left-hand side, bad drywall on the right-hand side. And so when you look at the graph on the right, lower right-hand corner, you see that all this is below this 1,000 level. Actually, the level at which is, is a concern is 2,000, but you can see that it's all below there. But if you look on the... Uh, the, the first graph to the, uh, if, if you look on the upper uh, right-hand corner, you see that that's a good-looking HIVAC coil as compared to another good-looking HIVAC coil, which is on the left-hand side. And then you can see the, the second uh, picture down on the left-hand side, which is your ground wire on one of your outlets. It is good as compared to the one on the right-hand side, which is good as well. But let's go to one which is not so good. Uh, and you can see here, this is characteristic of what we see in homes with, with tainted drywall. Uh, looking at the, again, your norm, which is on the upper left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner, is you see the high-vac coils there now are corroded and, and looking black. And you can also see the, uh, the picture down from that on the right-hand side, which is your ground wire, which is that silvery gray color I talk about, in some cases black. Then go down to the graph on your lower right-hand side, and you can see that you know, test 1, test 2, and test 9 are all above that level of around 2,000, 3,000 parts per million. Now, this is pretty characteristic because we hardly ever see a house that's full of Chinese drywall. 
It usually has it in certain rooms. Uh, it has it, some, some I've seen is just in the garage. Some I've seen only has, uh, out of the 200 or so Chinese uh, uh, boards, complete drywall boards, you might have only five or ten pieces of bad drywall. Uh, sometimes it's in the foyer. And another one I'd like to draw your attention to is uh, this one here, which is a very interesting one in that you look, uh, if you went in this with just visual and did not have the x-ray gun, then you would say, well, look at the upper right-hand corner. It looks fine compared to your, to your uh, norm on the right hand, on the upper left-hand corner. And then you look at your ground wires, and those are fine as well. So what happened? Well, if you look down at the bottom in the graph, you can see that this house is full of Chinese drywall. Well, why? Because if you, again, look at the right-hand corner, this house was kept at 68 degrees. Uh, this problem is exacerbated by heat and humidity. And why did this problem occur or manifest itself first and foremost in Florida? Well, one is we had a big building boom here, and we were building a lot of homes in 2006 is when this major problem occurred. But also because we have a lot of heat and humidity, and when you turn that thermostat up, it starts off gassing. That begs the question then, could a homeowner trying to disguise Chinese drywall keep the thermostat below 68 degrees so people wouldn't smell some of that sulfur and you wouldn't see some of that corrosion? Absolutely, and this is the example I just gave. Uh, this person wasn't trying to, to hide the Chinese drywall, but because he kept his, his it was a townhome, kept it at 68 degrees, you had none of the classical symptoms of Chinese drywall. No sulfur smell, no corrosion. But I would almost guarantee you, if you turn the thermostat up to uh, 85 degrees and went, went away for a week, you'd come back in, you'd smell sulfur, and you'd start seeing corrosion. Well, 68 degrees in the summer is an awfully low number to keep it at, <laughs> but I suppose some people do. The polar bear type. That's true, Brett. You've been listening and watching The Future of Real Estate presented by the Ellis team at REMAX. Fascinating stuff on Chinese drywall. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 